This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Just who exactly is on the wrong side of history here? This is Wretched Radio. Almost like the Pharisee card, almost like the Hitler card. You slap that one down and it's game over, buddy boy. Somebody disagrees with you about morality and values. You simply state you're on the wrong side of history. Wah and law, you win. It is an argument that is nonsensical, frankly. It is loaded with chronological snobbery. We're right because (laughs) it's us. We're the smartest people ever. And we have no understanding of history and context and how things, dare I say, evolve in a society. They change over time. There's different influences, different values, different political systems, different economies, a different level of civility. All of those things come to bear on a culture, but our current day right side of history experts, they don't allow for any of that. From the Federalist, an article titled, Why the Iconoclastic Left are on the Wrong Side of History. These are the folks, they want to erase all of history from our culture. They want to get rid of all of it. And and by the way, just as a little reminder, so much of this that is being driven by CRT will make its way into your church. Don't you panic. You let CRT into your church and there will be iconoclasts who want to tear down your Protestant history. Guaranteed. Because that's how it works. It doesn't just apply in one realm and not the other. It applies in society, in government, in education, and it will apply in the church. Stephen Watts, history professor at the University of Missouri, helps us to understand history. And this is something I think you and I would do well to get a better grasp on. There are a lot of arguments that are being made for today that are based in the historical past. We need to learn how to understand what was going on back then. Now, that's always a tricky challenge because, of course, writing history, everybody brings baggage to it. They write it a certain way. They pick this. They leave out that. They don't give the full story, the innuendos, the zeitgeist. So much of history is, well, sketchy, and it's hard to really, really grasp unless you do a really thorough study by a lot of different authors to get a slightly clearer picture. But that doesn't mean that we cannot understand that history, by its very definition, means it wasn't the same then as it is now. And if we don't help people understand that, uh, you, you can plan on more of your culture's history being erased and more of your church's history being replaced. And you will start to see some bad ideas being imported into the church. Reparations, for one. Books are being written about that. What are they based on? History. Some letters here. A story there. And that means this is the way it needs to be today. Hold on. History has much to teach us. But we need to understand that there is much to history. That it isn't just, oh, that happened. Okay, that one thing. Now we take that and that's the way it was for everybody back then all the time. That's just not the way that history works. This is from, again, the Federalist. When not destroying history, awakened zealots try to manipulate it to ratify what they already believe. They go back to go, see that right, right back there? That, that, see, that's why it needs to be this. And a lot of it, by the way, is argument by anecdote. Nevertheless, uh, the professor of history, who actually studies this for a career, Stephen Watts, said that there's some misguided principles in their approach. The awakened believe that the past is just like the present, And its inhabitants should be judged by contemporary standards. That's fallacious. That is not the way to read history. And if we don't start tagging this, they will march right over culture and the church. This is mistaken. Early on, the student of history learns to beware of presentism or judging the past by the standards of the present. 
presentism. Presentism. Repeat the word and remember it. Presentism. That it's the present. So present presentism. I guess pre- present would be to like put forth present, which is where the emphasis should be, is that the present, we're, we're just everything. And this is the way it should have always been. No, no, it's not. And any good history prof teaches that right out of the gate. He writes, if not, you end up condemning Charlemagne for not endorsing women's rights. Or Susan B. Anthony for insensitivity to transgenderism. The awakened believe that the past is a pantheon of heroes and villains to be lionized or condemned. Why? Because they don't understand presentism. The awakened believe that the past unfolds according to conscious decisions and intent. And historical actors must be held to account. It's also fallacious. You make a thousand decisions in the course of a day without really thinking them through. You go to work in the morning and then you come home later in the day. Unless, of course, you've got one of those shifts. It's an overnight shift. That's kind of the pattern and the stat- the standard for our culture. The warp and woof drives a lot of what we do. We have stores that carry this. We've got parking lots that look like that. We've got an education system that we basically accept as the standard. And you just go along with it. What if they discover 200 years from now, when they're on the right side of history and we're the knuckleheads, oh, it turns out educating kids for 12 years, that's the worst thing you can do. You should do eight intense years. That's better. Therefore, everybody who lived in 2021 are a bunch of idiots. Well, no, you just you just go along with it. And the same thing is true when we read history. Even the novice student of history quickly sees that historical evolution often produced unintended consequences. Consider Lyndon Johnson's Great Society. Good idea. Seemed like he was on the right side of history. The devastation of the welfare state, state, the dependency that it is promoted, the debt that it is caused, it was well intended. And do you think somebody at that time, where they were like, hey, hey, I know what we're going to do. We're going to get this thing to become a big, monstrous mess that'll consume the budget and cripple America. Probably not. Well-intentioned people that were living in their time, making the best decisions that they could. The awakened believe that past morality is that that the past is a morality tale to be ransacked for lessons illustrating good and evil. Yet even a cursory look at past events discloses a world of motivations, often conflicting or ambiguous, at work in shaping outcomes. Henry Ford's adoption of the assembly line in 1911, here's a good example, reshaped the modern world. Combined idealism, you lower the cost of an automobile so that average people can have one. Interest, well, they could make money doing it, provide jobs. And unforeseen developments, like overly repetitious labor workers often resented or rejected. Do you think that's why he built that system? Hey, this is going to make people nuts working on the assembly line. They're going to become bored and out of their minds. No. It's not what they intended. They were making decisions in their time based on what they understood. The awakened, however, believe that an overwhelming theory, which is class conflict or modernization not long ago, whiteness, patriarchy, heteronormativity, intersectionality, offers a tidy explanation for everything. And that is why CRT is a helpful analytical tool. We can't get the world without CRT, which is an unbiblical framework. This is an error. The incredible complexity of human history demands multi-causal explanations and vigorous debate among competing interpretations. Not a con- this is good writing. Not a conga line of liberationist theories sent sneaking through the past shimmying and shaking to the rhythm of revolution. We have a challenge in front of us. History is being cited selectively to promote a modern day agenda. As Americans, from our article, search our national heritage for help in solving modern problems, we should embrace humility, not hubris. Being on the right side of history, as the awakened say, 
doesn't mean being in the left side of history. <laughs> it means realizing our past, like our present, is imperfect. Approaching it with condescending arrogance, as the woke movement tends to do, merely highlights the smallness of the examiners. We have a task in front of us, and it demands thoughtful examination and nuanced judgments, not a frenzied kangaroo court convened by wokesters jacked up on ideological amphetamines and sprouting, spouting slogans. And so it is. You are going to run into this. In history class? No. In your church, as proponents of our current social justice movement seek to apply CRT, they will become iconoclasts, erasing everyone who does not somehow manage to live up to our modern-day standards imposed on people from the past. As Christians, we need to be better historians. This is Wretched Radio. I'll be needing to see some identification, young man. Why? Because you, my friend, are a lawbreaker. No, I'm not. You are, according to this video from Ray Comfort. Production. I need the clips on time. 911, what's your emergency? We met about Yeah, he asked me this. to become a gospel partner, and he took my credit card. 